part 17, who the fuck did I marry? So for context and just to clarify some stuff going forward, I'm going to now call my ex-husband. <laughs> I'm going to use the name that I call him in real life. Um, so that way it clears up the whole fiance, boyfriend, husband, ex-husband thing. So his name is Legion. Anyone that knows me will tell you that is what I call him. So Legion and I, when I left off at part uh, 16, um, or excuse me, part 15, Legion and I got married January 5th of 2021. For the first two weeks, things were fine. Um, we got into like a, a routine, basically. I would go to work, he would go to work. Um, he was still leaving the house at around 6.15 every morning. He was still on the phone with his brother, the one that lived in Philly, um, every morning. They would just, that was their time to talk. From what I was told, the brother got off work, I guess he must have worked the third shift. And so he was getting off work as Legion was getting ready to go to work. So that was the perfect time for them to talk. He would talk to um, his brother in Baltimore and the brother in Augusta. Pretty much, you know, just a quick phone call here and there, if not every day, every other day. So everything was pretty much the same. I would talk to my mom almost every day. I would talk to my aunt almost every day. Um, so it was it was nothing to kind of, hmm, that's weird. Um, that's what the morning routine was. He would talk. So I worked at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and I said this in a previous video, but... Again, there were things I said in previous videos that I remember saying, hey, remember that because it's going to come back later. So I worked at Georgia State Patrol. I had been working there for almost eight years, seven or eight years by the time Legion got into the picture. He was fine with the fact that I worked um, within law enforcement. I'm not a trooper. I'm not a sworn officer. I'm a civilian. However, he... Um, Again, his dad was a retired police officer, so he was perfectly fine in the beginning with the fact that I worked for Georgia State Patrol. Um, he had been to my office before. He had met some of my um, co-workers, obviously even with COVID because I still had to go into the office two or three days a week. He had been up there. So the friend who took me to the hospital when I had my miscarriage has met him. He and I have been to her home with her and her significant other before. So again, even in the world of COVID, when there were little times where you could get together with people, he has met people in my life. He has met um, my friend or that particular friend, and he has met some of my coworkers. So when we got married, the first two weeks, like I said, was fine. And then... <laughs> It's as if something snapped, um, something just changed. What was totally acceptable before, suddenly little comments were made. Why are you wearing that to work? You get off at 3.30, so you'll be home by 5, right? Things that had never happened before. He had never questioned what time I'm going to be home. Um... Really, he didn't need to question it because when I'm off work, I, I leave. So it was never a situation of, oh, I'm going to just sit around at work and just run my mouth because I have nothing to do. Um, and then it turned into, you know, he would call me every day from work. And I'm going to demonstrate how those phone calls went. But he would call me every day from work. And if he even so much as heard a male voice in the background... He would have little comments to me. Who was that? Are they in your office? You know, man, you know, I never know who's who's around you. Because it seemed like every time I call you, I have the hiccups, sorry. It seems like every time I call you, um, there's some man around. And I'm just like, you know, at first I kind of shrugged it off. I laughed it off because it really, truly was absurd to me. Um but then it became a bit more frequent. 
And so I really just didn't feed into it because I'm like, I don't know if this is some insecurity. I don't know if this is jealousy because nothing has ever been done to make you feel any sort of insecure type of way. I've never entertained another guy. I've never flirted with another guy. Like, I don't know where this is coming from. So it is also important to note, we got married January 5th. Things started changing um, around two weeks later. And the reason why I know it's two weeks is because I had recorded an audio diary on January 21st is the date of the audio diary. And I talk about how maybe I had unrealistic expectations because it seemed as if things were changing with he and I. So two weeks pass, he starts making little comments. End of January comes, he informs me that he wants to start looking for a house again. I had no real desire to go through that process. So what he decides is that he's going to look for a house for us using his friend, the uh, realtor, the one I did not meet. So he tells me that he and his friend have been talking and he's going to start looking at houses. And what he's going to do is basically if he feels like it's a house I would like, then he wants to show it to me because he feels like, you know, I know that your attitude really isn't you're in the mood to look for a house. So I'm going to start looking. And then if I think it's a great house, then, you know, you can come see it. Um, and I remember thinking that's not like, that's not going to work. You're not going to choose a house without me. And he was like, no, I'm not going to choose the house. But I just think that, you know, me and old boy have been talking. And so he has some houses that he is representing. He wants to show me. So why don't you let me look at it? And if it's worth the time, then I'll bring you to look at it. So he already had some sort of plan in place after talking to his friend um, about how he's going to start looking at houses. This is Jan- This is the end of January, 2021. So I kind of threw my hands in the air and was just like, whatever, because I'm not getting emotionally involved in looking at houses. And for me, that's kind of what it was. I felt like I would see a house, I could picture us living there, and then it gets snatched away somehow, some way. I didn't want to go through that. So the reaction that he wanted, which was for me to throw a fit, I did not do. I was just like, okay, all right. Like, I trust you. Um, And remember that I said the reaction he wanted, because that's going to come back later. So he started looking at houses. (sighs) Funny enough, the houses that he looked at, none of them I actually saw. But he would call me and say, I'm at this house in Sandy Springs with the uh, realtor friend. Apparently his realtor, his realtor friend's name was Scott, not to be confused with the other Scott, the one that was actually helping us that dropped us as clients. I want to make that clear. There were two Scots. One is the realtor who was representing us, who said, Hey, I need proof of funds. If you don't have those proof of funds, I cannot show you any more houses. The other Scott is his friend who he had talked to on the phone at least 50 to 100 times in front of me. That's that's the Scott that he said is going to show me this house in Sandy Springs. Um, apparently the house was like $800,000. So he was like, I think that um, if I, you know, if I like the house, then I'm going to bring you out here so you can see it. All right. Now let's go into part 18. <laughs> 